Hello, everybody. I'm Parsha Becky, and we are back for another week of Parsha. As I'm sure you recall, we are currently in the middle of the second book of Chumash, the book of Shemot. Shemot means names, and the name of this week's Parsha is Titzaveh, which means you should command. The Parsha is called Titzaveh, you should command, because at the start of the Parsha, Hashem tells Moshe, Moshe, Titzaveh, you should command the Jewish people to prepare pure olive oil to light the ner tamid, the candle that will always be lit in the mishkan. If you've ever been inside a shul, you'll know that every shul has a ner tamid, a light that's always on, usually at the front of the shul. And they actually get that concept of the ner tamid from the mishkan, where there was always a light lit on the menorah. And that was going to always be lit using pure olive oil. And it would be lit by the kohanim every evening and every morning to keep it going. And the parsha continues, who are these Kohanim? Let's explain that. The Kohanim are going to be Aharon, Moshe's brother, and his four sons. And after them, their family, their children, their children's children will continue as the, in the role of the Kohanim, as the people who do the work in the Mishkan. And since they have this important job in working in the Mishkan, they're going to get a special uniform to go with it. Aharon will be the Kohen Gadol, the boss Kohen, the head honcho of the Kohanim. And as the Kohen Gadol, Aharon gets a special uniform of his own to wear. The Parsha is uh, now going to tell us how to make those uniforms, because just like we need to make the things that are part of the Mishkan, we need to make these uniforms that are used for the Mishkan. So for part of Aharon's Kohen Gadol uniform, he gets an ephod, which is a sort of robe made from blue cloth. And it has not exactly shoulder pads, but it has shoulder stones. There's two big rocks on the shoulders of the ephod, uh, carved with the names of the 12 tribes, the 12 Shvatim of the Jewish people, six names on each shoulder. Uh, and he also gets to wear the choshen, which is a sort of necklace or sandwich board uh, made of uh, gold metal with uh, 12 precious stones representing, again, the 12 tribes, the 12 shvatim of the Jewish people. Each of the stones are different in four rows of three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And the choshen uh, stays on and hangs by gold chains from the ephod, from those shoulder uh, stones and from the sides. Uh, and Aharon as Kohen Gadol also gets to wear the tzitz. Take a moment, you can say it too. It's fun to say tzitz. He wears the tzitz, which is a sort of a gold tiara with the words Kodesh la Hashem, which means holy to Hashem, right on his forehead, suspended over his forehead by a blue string. Uh, and in addition to these special items, the ephod, the choshen, and the tzitz, uh, Aharon also wears the regular Kohen uniform of a cloth shirt, a cloth uh, head cloth, a cloth a belt or sash and cloth pants. And Aharon's sons also get the uniforms made of a cloth shirt, belt, uh, head cloth, and pants. And the Parsha continues uh, by telling what they're going to have to do in order to inaugurate them into this job as Kohanim. Uh, they're, first, they're going to take a bath. They're going to get dressed mostly in their uniform. We're going to put the special special anointing oil on Aaron's head. That oil marks him as the Kohen Gadol, marks him as special and holy to Hashem. And after we put that special oil on Aaron's head, we'll put their head cloths on, the rest of their uniform. Uh, they're going to do some special uh, gifts to Hashem, some sacrifices of a uh, male cow and two male sheep and some matzah. And it goes into all sorts of detail about what they'll do and how they'll do these sacrifices. And everything they do that day to get them ready as Kohanim, they're going to have to repeat for seven days. Every day, all the same stuff for seven days. And at the end of that seven-day process, they will have been inaugurated as Kohanim. And the Parsha says, and once, once they get their job as Kohanim, and the Mishkan's ready and the Kohanim are ready, they're going to have to jump right into their work. So let's uh, let us know in advance right now in the Parsha what is going to be their daily task, the bare minimum of daily korbanot, daily sacrifices that the Kohanim bring, in addition to whatever else is going on that day. Every day there's going to be two sheep, one in the morning, one in the evening, and each sheep, the morning sheep and the evening sheep, uh, comes with a mixture of flour and oil and with some wine uh, that get given to Hashem. Uh, and at the end of the parsha, the parsha is like, okay, but in case you're confused, this is still all about stuff we're making for the Mishkan. And in fact, let's give us one more piece of furniture for the Mishkan, uh, since we've been learning since last week about building the Mishkan. Last week, we learned about building the regular Mizbeach for the Mishkan, the altar for giving animals as gifts to Hashem. This week, we're learning about another Mizbeach, a smaller Mizbeach, a smaller altar. This is the Mizbeach HaKatorah, the incense altar. 
Uh, this Mizbech is not used for giving animals to Hashem. It's only used for burning incense, for making this nice smell. Nice smell. God's going to give us the special recipe for it in a couple parshas. Uh, and the, the small Mizbech, the Mizbech for incense, for the nice smell, is made of wood and coated in gold. Remember, the big one for the animals was coated in copper. This one is coated in gold, and it also has poles attached to help it, to help people carry it, make it portable like everything else in the Mishkan. That is the end of Parshat Tetzaveh. I want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom and a Purim Sameach.